In this demo, I will show you how to properly format roster-based images in Photoshop for use in an InDesign project for both print and web outputs. If you're going to follow along with me, you will need at least one image that you found to use. Uh, you can grab any image off the internet, preferably one that has a significant number of pixels. So try to get one that has maybe 2,000 pixels across or more. You will also need to open InDesign and Photoshop. On a Mac, you can open your applications by going to the application option on the finder and finding your Photoshop folder. If you haven't already downloaded Photoshop, as a student at Salt Lake Community College, you have free access through your Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. So go into your Adobe Creative Cloud folder, launch the Creative Cloud, and then from there you can download Photoshop. I've already placed some images into an InDesign document. So create a new InDesign document and then follow along. For this example, I wasn't sure how big I needed my image to be for my project. So I placed it and I experimented and I changed different sizes and I scaled the picture until I found the perfect size for my needs. And we're gonna pretend for this demo that I need three examples so that we can practice this three times together. When you are placing images and experimenting, it's perfectly fine to just place the JPEG that you got off of your digital camera or whatever image file you have while you are in the experimental phase. You're playing around, you're experimenting, you're changing sizes. You might even decide that it's not the right image and you end up swapping it out. But once you come to, the, to a decision that it is the correct image and you know the exact size that you need it to be, you should go back and you should format that image to be the exact size, file format, resolution, and color mode needed for your project and your project's intended output. So I made three graphic frames so that we can practice. And if we select them with our selection tool, you can see that the first one is three and a half inches square, the second is three and a half by three inches, and the third is 2.75 by two and a half inches. So let's jump to Photoshop and let's take the same image and format it perfectly for these frames. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the images that are in the frames by clicking the donut in the middle and hitting delete. Alternatively, you can grab your direct selection tool and click the picture and then delete it that way, whichever option works for you. I already downloaded an image off of unsplash.com to use for this demo, so you need to open it in Photoshop. You can find it wherever you saved it and control or right click on the image and open with Photoshop or inside Photoshop, you can choose file and open. However you want to do that, make sure that you have the image open. Immediately when you open the file, you don't want to edit the original in case you destroy it and can't fix it. So we're going to immediately change it to be the file format that you want it to be for your project. So let's format this first image for print. We need to choose file and save as to save a copy of this image. I'm going to just toss mine in the same downloads folder with the original. But we need to save it as a print file format. And if we look at the image, it is a raster based image. So we need to save it as a file format that is appropriate for raster or pixel based art. A JPEG is a web file format that is good for raster based images. However, we're going to print this, so it's not appropriate currently. So we need to change it to a TIFF you could also use a Photoshop file that would be perfectly acceptable. For our class, we're going to practice using a TIFF file. So once we save it, in this case as balloons.tiff, we now have a print file format. The next setting that we're going to adjust is the color mode. If you go to the image menu and choose mode, you can see what the current color mode of the image is. It's in RGB, which is to be expected. I downloaded it from the internet. Images on the internet are images on the web, and images on the web use RGB. But if we are going to print this on a commercial printing press, 
we need to change the color mode to CMYK. A prompt will appear, select OK. Essentially, you're accepting that the colors that can be printed are not exactly the same as the colors that you can see on the web. So when you change your color mode from RGB to CMYK, you have to accept that you're changing the range of available colors for your project. The next setting is the resolution. So we want a print resolution for a print project. Go to the image menu and choose image size. Right now, the image size dialog is simply telling us facts about our project. It's 3,555 pixels across and the same tall. The size of the image is 49 by 49 inches square at 72 resolution. Printing resolution as a general rule is 300 pixels per inch. So we need to change the resolution from 72 to 300. It is essentially important that you do not resample. To resample means to change the number of pixels in the image. When I change the resolution down here to 300, I do not want the dimension of the image and pixels to change at all. So watch what happens if resample is selected. So I'm going to change it from 300, um, from 72 to 300. I went from 3,555 pixels across to 14,813 pixels. So Photoshop just made up millions of pixels to make my project bigger. We do not want that. So we want to, let's put this back at 72. We want to change the resolution with resample unchecked from 72 to 300. And this time you can watch that the dimensions do not change. What's going to change is the width and the height of the image. So as I change the resolution to 300, I'm taking those 3,555 pixels across and I am squeezing them closer together so that every one inch of the image has 300 pixels. So I'm pushing them closer together, I'm making the image more dense, which in turn is creating a higher quality image for printing. But what's important is the number of pixels has not changed. The last thing we need to do before we select OK to accept this change is we need to take note of the size of the image in inches. What we've just done is change the resolution to 300, but we have also identified the biggest that this image could be printed. And the biggest is 11.85 uh, 11 inches across and 11.85 inches tall. When we go back to use this project in InDesign, I need to make sure the graphic frame that I'm going to use it in can be no larger than 11.85. Now at this stage, we have the correct file format, color mode, and resolution. But if I go back to InDesign, our first frame was not 11.85 inches, it's only three and a half inches. So we need to crop the image down to fit exactly inside this frame. We don't want to place an image that's 11.85 inches square in a frame that's only 3.5 inches because we're going to be preparing an image that is so much bigger than it needs to be that the file size is going to be significantly higher than it needs to be for the 3.5 inch square. So the last step is to use the crop tool. And if you look at your tools panel on the far left side of the Photoshop workspace, the one, two, three, four, five, six tool down is the crop tool. Click on that. If you haven't used Photoshop before, your crop tool will probably default. This is called um, the options bar in Photoshop. It will probably default to say ratio in this first drop down. Click the drop down and change the, the setting to WH resolution. That's width, height, resolution. And then you can type in the exact width, height, and resolution that you need this to be for your project. So the frame in InDesign is three and a half inches by three and a half inches at 300 resolution. The grid that you see is called the crop overlay. You could now drag your image around until the part of the image that you want to keep is selected. You could even resize the crop overlay so that you're still going to crop to 3.5 by 3.5 inches, but maybe you get less of the image. I'm just going to let it crop to a square. And when you're ready, you can crop the image by hitting the check mark to confirm 
your crop has worked. Before we leave Photoshop, we can double check that it worked by going to the image a menu and choosing image size. Now when we go back to the image size dialog, the frame, the information should tell us that the dimensions are a certain number of pixels across and tall, but more importantly, I've cropped the image to be exactly 3.5 inches across, 3.5 inches tall, at 300 resolution. When you're done, hit File and Save to save your TIFF, and then you can close out of Photoshop because we're done in Photoshop for now. Now that we've formatted our image for use in a InDesign print document, we can move it into our project. Since we formatted it for this first frame, I'm going to move the other two out of the way. When you're ready, you can file place to place your artwork. There are a couple of different options, they all work the same, but you can essentially select the frame and choose file place, and your image will drop right into the frame, or if the frame is not selected, you can choose file and place. And then you have the option to either click the frame and the image will go directly into it, or as an added bonus, because we formatted this image to be the exact size that we want it to be, you can just click and it will place at the exact size that you want it. Let's compare that to me placing the original JPEG that I grabbed off the internet. When I click, it places it huge. It's ginormous because it hasn't been formatted for my design yet. Let me get rid of that guy. Once you place the image, if you look at the links panel, so I have the links panel open, you can open it via the window menu and links. If we zoom in, we can see all the images that are used in our project. And if you click any one of them, the bottom half of the panel will give you additional information about the file. We can see that it's saved as balloons.tiff which means the file format is a TIFF, which we now know to be a print file format, good for raster-based images. The color space or color mode is CMYK, which is a print color mode, and that the actual and effective PPI or actual and effective resolution of the image is set to 300. Actual PPI is the resolution of the image as you formatted it in Photoshop. So the actual is basically telling you whether or not you formatted it correctly. The effective is telling you how, what the resolution is displaying as once it's been put into InDesign. This image here is displayed at 100% size, but let's say that I was to resize this and make it smaller. The file size of the image doesn't change. I'm just squishing the pixels closer and closer together. So what happens is as you squeeze the pixels closer together, it increases the resolution of the image. So the file itself still has a resolution of 300. That's our Photoshop resolution. But the resolution that the image is now displaying as in InDesign is 682 pixels per inch, which is way higher than we would need it for any print. Or worse, if I was to stretch it and make it bigger, I could lower the resolution below 300. So now if I was to print this image, I would see pixelation or a blurriness to the image because it doesn't meet the standards to be printed that big at such a low resolution. What you should be doing is checking your links panel for all of your images to quick do a visual check to make sure that if it's a print document, it's print resolution, print file format, print color mode, and most important, your actual and your effective resolution should be the same. Every once in a while, um, you will have two numbers for the effective resolution. It might say 280x300. What that means is that you have somehow resized the image. And I'm going to make this frame bigger so that you can see. So there's a picture inside a frame. So if we click with our white mouse or click on the donut, I can select the image. If I somehow squish the image down and I change the aspect ratio of the image, the, let me see if I can zoom in here, the effective resolution is now 300 by 383. If you ever see two values here, it means you have stretched your image 
or squished your image or pulled your image and now there's some distortion to it. To fix it, you need to click the image, not the container. So you'll need to grab your white mouse or click on the donut until you have the image selected. Then you can come up to your scale and you want to reset the scale on both the width and the height to 100%. And then if you check your actual, actual and effective resolution, they will be back to 300. Okay. If you are preparing an image for the web, your project is probably formatted in a different type of document. This is a print-based document. So if we choose File, New, Document, and we go to the web presets, and we choose any one of these, maybe scroll down for more, uh, I'm sorry, view all presets, you can find a ton of different ones. So you might find the one, this is for an original iPad, 1024 by 768. When you create your document, what you're doing is you're creating you're, you're creating your artwork based on visual design, not on resolution. So this document is 724 pixels tall, no, 768 pixels tall and 1024 pixels across. So as you're designing and you're experimenting, you might decide that you want to put a picture on the far right hand side of your project. You need to make it go to the top and you want it to go all the way to the edge of the page. So as you're designing, what you're going to do is you're going to place image. You might place your, your original JPEG that you got off the internet and you can right click, choose fitting and fill the frame proportionally. But what you can do is you can visually design, experiment and play around with placement. Maybe you end up deciding that you want a thinner stripe, but you still want it on the edge of the page. When the artwork is in its perfect location and you know the exact size that you want it to be, then you're going to format the image for the web. And you're going to do the same thing that you did for print. You're just going to make different decisions as you're choosing your file format, your resolution, and your color mode. So right now, this image frame is 7, uh, 278 by 768. And because it will be easier for me to remember, I'm going to make it 275. <coughs> Excuse me. So if we go to Photoshop and we open that JPEG image, we can go through all the same settings that we went through for the print image, but we'll do that for web. We're going to save a copy. So I guess technically we could use this JPEG, but we also don't want to override the original in case we mess up and have to get back to it. So what we can do is we can save it as a JPEG and change the name, or you could even save this image as a PNG file. You would not want to save this as a GIF file because GIF files do not do well with tones and gradients and, and changes of color. So this is not a good image for a GIF, but it would be perfectly okay for a JPEG or a PNG file. So we're going to save a copy as balloons too, so it differentiates from the one that has been saved. And then now we can go through those same steps. So if we choose image and mode, we see it's in RGB. So we're just going to confirm it is a web color mode, which it is. If we go to image and image size, again, it's already, because I pulled this image from the web, it's already in 72 resolution. What I want to look at in this case, since I need to crop this image to be 275 pixels across and 768 pixels tall inside the image size dialog I want to see that I have at least that number of pixels and I have way more than I need and so in here I'm going to change the resolution to 72 and just confirm I have the pixels I need we'll use the crop tool and the crop tool can be used to crop to inches in resolution but it can also be used to crop to pixels so the width height resolution in this case, I'm going to type 275px for pixels. Don't just type 275 because it defaults to inches. And then the height was 768px for pixels. And then the resolution, because we always format web uh, images at 72 resolution, will be 72. So now I have a crop overlay that isolates just to that size. So I can move my balloon 
into place until I'm happy with that and crop the image. We can choose image and image size to confirm. And I don't really care about the width and height in inches. I care that I've confirmed that the size of the image in pixels, the absolute size, is 275 pixels by 768 and that the resolution is 72. We can hit file and save. And then again, we can leave Photoshop and we can come back to our InDesign project. Now that we're back in InDesign, we can choose file place, find the image that we've formatted for the web. And you can, just like you did for the print image, you can click to place, you can click in the frame. You have all those different options, but no matter which option you choose, the image will place at exactly 275 pixels across and 768. Because again, when you format for the web, you're more concerned about how many pixels the image will take up than what the resolution is. We can also take a look at info provided to us on the links panel. So you can see balloons2.jpg is an image that I have placed. It is saved as a JPEG, which is a web file format, in RGB, which is a web color profile, color mode or color space. The resolution is both 72 for the actual and 72 for the effective, which is our goal when formatting for web images, that they are formatted in Photoshop at 72 and they display in InDesign at 72 resolution. But most importantly for preparing images for the web, I want to confirm that the dimensions of the image are the dimensions they're going to display. And that frame, when I selected it, told me it is 275 pixels across and 768 pixels tall. So I told you that we would practice. So let's go back to our first document and let's practice formatting for the other two frames. So to do this, we need to open um, the original image um, or we can open the TIFF that we've already formatted. These frames are smaller than the original, so we could take the balloons.tiff and we could save a copy of this and then just change the formatting. And that might happen sometimes in your design. You might decide to change the size of the image and then you need to just go make a few tweaks to the image. If that's the case, um, you can either, let's go back to InDesign for a second. If you had placed this image and you thought it was perfect the way it was and then you decide that you want to resize the image to be exactly 2.345, let's do Let's do exactly 2.5 to make it easier on the cropping. And you decide that that image should be exactly 2.5 inches square. If that's the case and you want to change the format of an image that's already been placed, instead of going back and opening it from InDesign, you should select the image and either from the flyout menu or from the the halfway bar icon, I don't know what this line is called here, you can hit the edit with button. So if you choose the option flyout menu, you'll select the image, choose the option flyout menu, and you can choose edit with Photoshop, or you can hit this little edit icon and you will allow you to edit the original. So I'm going to choose edit with and Photoshop. It will open the original image and then from here, since I know the only change I need to make is cropping, I can grab the crop tool, change the size to be 2.5 inches by 2.5 inches at 300 resolution, crop the image, hit save, and close. Now when I come back to InDesign, if I select the frame, it now tells me that I have successfully cropped my image. Please ignore that it says that my actual reflective is off by one. Let's do, there we go, it got slightly off. So now you can see that my image is still a TIFF, it's still CMYK. The only change I made was that I've cropped it to be the correct size. So now the actual and effective resolution have gone back to 300. However, if you have decided, so I'm gonna un, um, 
Let's go back to Unsplash and get another image since I saved those changes. If I decide that I wanted to just completely change the image or use a new image, um, or I want to have multiple instances of the same picture, but maybe the size is now bigger, um, you can always go back to the original image, so this is the original, and then you can repeat the process from the beginning. So for the second frame, this image is 3.5 inches by 3 inches. So our process is to always open the original, file, save as, save it as a copy in the file format that matches your output. If it's print, it would be a TIFF. I'm going to call this the second time I downloaded the balloons. Go to image mode and change the color mode to the color mode that matches your output for print. That will be CMYK. Go to image and image size, change your resolution to 300, do not resample, and then just take a note of the biggest that the image could be. As long as that size is bigger than you need it to be, then you're good to go. Then use the crop tool, change the drop down menu from ratio, which is the default, to width, height, and resolution, and then type the exact width, height, and resolution you want. I believe that was three and a half inches by three inches at 300. Always type your measurements, whether it's pixels or inches, just to make sure Photoshop crops it to the, to the measurement that you're thinking of. Once you change the size of the, of the crop, you can use the crop overlay to drag your image around until you have the exact part of the image that you would like to keep, and then hit the check mark on your control bar to, or I guess it's called the options bar in uh, Photoshop, to crop your image. You can confirm the crop by going to the image menu and image size. Make sure it's exactly the size that you wanted it to be. And then hit file save. Then you can leave Photoshop and go to InDesign. And again, you have the option, you can select your frame and you can choose file place. Or because you formatted it to the exact size that you need it to be, you can just choose file place and click and it will place at exactly the size that you're wanting it to be and if you compare it to the links panel you can see that the formatting is a TIFF CMYK the Photoshop resolution which is the actual resolution is 300 and the resolution inside of InDesign is also 300 If you'd like to practice the last frame, do it on your own and then play the next video and we'll go through the steps together.